<sighs> Let's do this. Hello everyone and I'm so excited to have you back. As you know, I'm not in my usual studio. I wanted to do a different setup for episode four because today I will show you what's in my camera bag. If you're new to my channel, my name is Bennett and I'm a filmmaker here in Switzerland. This channel is all about filmmaking, so if that's your thing, keep on watching. Today I will show you the gear I use when I'm on the go and explain to you why I use them. By the way, you will find all the products in the video description below, so feel free to check them out. Okay, let's start. Let's get these things off the table. So first I want to start off with my camera bag. So I use the ProLite camera backpack by Manfrotto. I have been using this backpack for a couple of years now and have been quite happy with it. Uh, what I like about it is that it has a top and side axis so that I can access my camera body and lens quickly without unzipping the main compartments. I can fit in my 15 inch MacBook Pro in the main flap and also has a zipper barrier in between. It has a good size so that you can use it as a hand luggage when traveling. What's not so good about it is that it has no extra pockets uh, or a water holder. But overall, it's an awesome backpack, uh, very durable and secure. I would definitely recommend this one. Next, I want to present to you my full frame mirrorless Sony a7 III camera. I own two of these cameras, one functioning as my main camera, which I'm recording right now, and the other as my backup or B camera. So overall, I have been very happy with this camera. I love how it offers so much for its price. It can shoot 4K at 30 frames per second and 1080p in 120 frames per second. The low light performance is very good on the Sony a7 III. It has also made some big with the autofocus and is quite amazing and reliable. I like how I can use the custom button to dial in my personal settings. As an example, I have dial one set to 4K 30 frames per second and dial two to 1080p 120 frames per second so I can easily switch between those two. Uh, it can record in log format, which increases the dynamic range and lets you recover blown out highlights to a certain degree. It has a five axis in-body image stabilization and can even record time lapse with the new update. Essentially, the a7 III has everything I need except for the uh, flip out screen. Talking about batteries, I bring two spares of Sony NPFZ100 batteries with me, even though the a7 III has a pretty ridiculous battery life. I can shoot almost one day with it, but it's always good to have some spare batteries with you in case you can't charge uh, for a longer period of time. So next we have the Sony 24 to 105 millimeter. This is my on-to-go lens. It has a great range with a constant f4 aperture. The image is very sharp on this lens and has a nice bokeh when using it the right situation. It is also weather sealed and offers optical stabilization. It even has a custom button which I use as a focus control for traveling, I think this is perhaps the best lens to get. So next we have the Sony 55 millimeter lens from Zeiss. I have to say with this lens, you really, you really get some beautiful bokeh. I use this also in low light situation because of its faster aperture of 1.8. Uh, I would definitely recommend this one. Uh, it's a great lens. Okay guys, this is very important. Always have a cleaning kit with you. You never know if your sensor has a dust particle covering your screen that could mess up the whole shot. Also, for lenses, I sometimes get dust and fingerprints on it. You can easy fix this by using a blower or a microfiber cloth. Definitely buy these and have these in your backpacks. So this is a must have. I use the variable ND filter from Tiffin. This is one of the most useful accessories you can get for video. So these ND filters work to reduce the amount of light entering the lens. For video, you can use to dial the correct shutter speed that will allow you to get a cinematic look. Make sure you have one of these in your bags. It's really, really useful and saves a lot of time. 
So I use the Peak Design camera strap. I highly recommend this one uh, because of its quick anchor mount. You can easily clip the camera on and off the strap. So this is really convenient. Uh, it's a must have. Another tool by Peak Design is the Capture Pro camera clip. Good for point and shoot. It has a quick release lock and easy access by just pressing the button here on the side and uh, taking it off and putting it back in. So I use the DJI Ronin S uh, to really capture those smooth shots. It's an awesome gimbal that can carry up to 3.6 kilo. It has a built-in feature which allows me to pull uh, focus or start stop recording uh, the pool focus doesn't work that well for the Sony a7 III but I hope that DJI will upgrade this soon I use the Gnarbox as my backup device when I don't bring my laptop with me this thing is really handy with the app it allows me to edit and share my content while I'm on the go uh, other people can connect to the Gnarbox as well and download the content that's on it uh, I also use it as a power bank. It's lightweight, durable, and has a nice design to it. So yeah, there are many advantages of having one of these. It's definitely worth checking out. I use the DJI Mavic Pro 2 as my drone. The image quality you get is really nice. It has a great dynamic range and does also better in low light because of its bigger sensor. It can shoot 4K with its 10-bit code and has a lot of features when shooting a scene. It's almost impossible to destroy this drone since it's packed with sensors that provide obstacle avoidance. I love using this drone, it's a lot of fun and I always carry this with me. So for sound, I take the Rode Video Micro with me, record external sound with it. It's tiny, cheap, and easy to use. It comes with a windshield and uses battery of the camera. The sound quality is quite good. I uh, would definitely recommend this one. I also take my GoPro Hero 5 with me. I mostly use it whenever I get in contact with water or need to get special angles. I also used to use it for time lapses, but since the a7 III offers that option, uh, I use the a7 III. So last but not least, I use the Aperture Amaron LED Mini Light. It's a pocket-sized LED light. It's incredibly compact and lightweight. It's great to use as a fill light or shooting at night. It has a great output and you can even adjust the brightness with it. So really great to have. So let's pack all the stuff in this camera bag. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. This is all the stuff I usually take with me when I'm on the go. If you like this episode, please leave a comment and let me know what you would like to see next on this channel. Subscribe to see more and hope to see you the next time. Goodbye.